Assalamu alaikum everyone. So my name is Sajjad Ali Mushtaq and I will be teaching you a course under title Wireless and Mobile, mobile Computing. So before starting, let me introduce myself. So uh, I did my master's in electronics from Qaeda Azam University, Islamabad, Pakistan in 1999. And after doing my master, I immediately joined Hamdard University, Faisalabad. Uh, as uh, as a system administrator so i worked there uh, for a couple of years and during my job i was promoted to uh, program coordinator over there and i worked in it department i was i was handling and managing the it department over there so uh, in 2001 i switched i uh, moved from uh, hamdard university uh, pakistan to Comsets uh, University, Pakistan, and I joined as a system administrator. So after a couple of months, I was uh, given the charge of manager uh, development and R&D. So uh, at Comsets, we did a lot of different projects. We have a lot of success stories uh, that includes National Testing Service, Pakistan. That is the only testing service nowadays uh, working at its full thrust. Uh, in Pakistan. So we planned, initiated, developed and launched this testi testing service and I was handling all uh, the operational content and managerial aspects of the national testing service. So uh, uh, moreover we did uh, another project that uh, is uh, nowadays being used at Comsets uni University itself and it is also being used by other clients that is the campus management system, university management system and we started from uh, automating the attendance only and then we uh, were, were keep going on adding different features and nowadays we have a full-fledged university management system and that is functional and working in all the campuses of Comsets uh, University Pakistan. So uh, after working couple of years uh, in Comsets uh, I plan to uh, plan for high studies so in 2006 uh, I moved to France for my higher education and uh, I started my PhD in France in 2007 so again uh, I was lucky enough to get the French funding so it was a project funded by French Ministry so there were a lot of different companies that were, that were involved in this uh, project it was a con consortium so France Telecom, Company Marges, uh, Thales and there are a lot of different companies that are involved in this project so actually they want to build an infrastructure a platform where they are able to provide different services so there were different carriers different service providers and uh, they will be providing different services on this platform. So my topic was related to project management and the rules, the policies that uh, actually has to be developed in order uh, for effective and efficient management of the platform. So that you can say it was related to project management uh, and network management and then uh, the telecommunication was also involved uh, in this uh, work or in this project. So after finishing my PhD in 2012 I s moved back to Pakistan and I uh, resumed my responsibilities and I joined the uh, electrical engineering department in Comsets Ab Abbottabad. So now I'm working there and I will be teaching you wireless and mobile computing. So uh, let's start. So first we will be trying to understand that what a wireless communication is. So whenever we talk about the communication, right, so our ultimate goal, our ultimate objective is the data transmission. So uh, if we take uh, the data transmission as an objective, irrespective of wired or wireless, right, so, so it, it is, uh, a, you can say, a task a complex task, right? So, uh, in wire, wired environment, we have uh, different advantages and disadvantages as well. On the other side, is if we talk about the wireless communication, right? So, it 
again has its own advantages and disadvantages. So, during this course, we will be discussing the features, the advantages of the wired communication because those are the concepts because the ultimate goal is data transmission, right? So, most of the standards, most of the protocols, most, most of the techniques, they are the same, but uh, there are some limitations, right? upper bounds when we talk about the wireless communication. For example, uh, we don't have enough power, we don't have enough battery, we don't have enough, enough processing power, right? So there are uh, some sort of limitations uh, in addition to the advantages. For example, we can move freely whenever we have. And we don't have to lay the wired infrastructure, which is a very tedious and uh, difficult task, right? So let's first uh, talk about what is wireless communication. So, as mentioned, the ultimate goal is the data transmission. So, in wireless communication, what we normally do, we actually uh, are interested in the transmission of voice, video, data, and we can also have some other services that are actually built by combining all these uh, three services. You can say triple play services multimedia services, quadruple services, right? So the ultimate goal is, and the ult our interest over here is, the transmission of voice, video, data, and uh, other services by using electromagnetic waves, electromagnetic waves, and the media, medium which is uh, going to be used is free space or atmosphere, right? So, as mentioned, we have to use electromagnetic waves and they are they, their characteristics are very close to the characteristics of the light for example they travel with the speed of light right if we have uh, uh, an electromagnetic wave that is traveling with uh, a particular speed c right so of course uh, we can relate frequency and wavelength by using this expression and here uh, we should have lambda so let me write down the lambda over here, lambda, and here again lambda. Okay, so that, that was a uh, mistake of fonts, right? So here you can see that we have frequency f, and the wavelength is represented by lambda, and we can have the relationship that actually are connecting or correlating c velocity of light, frequency, and lambda, right? So it means uh, if we have high frequency, it means the energy will be higher, and uh, the higher energy means that the signal will be uh, with half the capability of more penetration. Okay, so then uh, when we think about the wireless communication, so there are different types of wireless communication. So we will keep things simple, so we will uh, talk about uh, more sort of communications when we move on during this course. So let's have very simple sort of wireless uh, communication or classification. So point-to-point uh, -point communication, and then we have multi-point communication, and then we have broadcast communication. So you can see uh, in case of point-to-point -point communication, so we can take the example of the cellular network, that is uh, the conventional GSM network, or you can also take the example that if we have an antenna over here and antenna over this building and they are actually uh, having line of sight communication. So in this way, we can also have point to point communication. So here you can see we have this, uh, try to uh, <coughs> present the point to point communication, but here uh, you can see uh, we have established a cell, right? So this is the main tower and these are the uh, shorter tower and you can see we have antennas and they have uh, line of sight communication right so this is actually in order to cover a particular cell particular area then we have multi-point communication right so when we talk about the multi-point communication uh, you can uh, say that uh, we can take the example of uh, a wireless computer network where uh, for example Wi-Fi where all the computers uh, are, are being receiving the signal 
transmitted by uh, maybe a broadcast or maybe a router or maybe an access point, right? And then we have broadcast communication, right? So this, uh, here we have the example. We have a satellite over here. And as uh, we know that the satellite, it can cover a particular area or it has a certain footprint, right? So uh, if I have to mention the area, so it means that uh, this satellite has the coverage area like this because of the because uh, we have curvature in this shape, right? So it has a certain footprint. So here you can see that the satellite is broadcasting. So every receiver is receiving the signal, and then uh, it can be a data signal, data, data communication, or maybe a TV communication, or maybe a voice communication. So uh, there are a lot, lot of different types of communication that we can have by using this satellite communication. So here we have presented the broadcast uh, that lie uh, in one of the type of wireless communication. OK, so here we have merged uh, the different types of communication. So multi-service, so I have talked about different services, voice, video, uh, data, and then we talked about different types of classification of wireless communication that is point to point and then multi point and then broadcast so here you can see that uh, if we we are actually having all the services right so you can see convergence of services and then convergence convergence of different types of uh, cellular or wireless networks so this is uh, the base station right and that is actually used in order for in cellular communication and here we have the end uh, tower so you can see we have point to multi point communication right and uh, here we have the subscriber station right and you can see we are actually using backbone that is a wired backbone and here we have the conventional PSTN router so uh, we have shown a WAN wireless area network right and so it means that we are actually using almost uh, most of the technologies uh, over here, router, right? And here you can see we have uh, this, you can say this is can be maybe a Ethernet or co coaxial cable, right? And over this platform or this infrastructure, you can see that the core is established on a wide network the main network or the network where the main uh, services are residing, right? Uh, those services, they can be uh, voice services, video services, and data services, triple play services, and quadruple services, right? They are actually, uh, actually uh, installed or they are provided or they are hosted on a fixed network. That is the core network, main network. And those services are being accessed by using the wireless uh, infrastructure or wireless. So different, uh, we have different uh, points, right? Or you can say different gadgets, different computers, different cell phones that uh, actually are accessing those services via this wireless infrastructure. So this is the convergence of the concepts which we have studied so far that is uh, different classification of wireless networks and then the services which we talked about. So when we talk about wireless communication, so we have to think about the uh, electromagnetic radiation spectrum, right? Is the range of all possible frequencies of electromagnetic radiations, right? So spectrum of an object has a different meaning, right? So that's, we should not be confused and is instead the characteristic distribution of electromagnetic radiation, right? So you should be careful when we are explaining or talking about electromagnetic, electromagnetic spectrum, right? So here you can see we have uh, frequencies over here, right? And the, the frequency is rising when we go from right to left, right? So uh, the arrow is mentioning the movement. And here at the bottom of this belt, we have the wavelength so you can see that the wavelengths are increasing when we move from left to right right so they are 
inversely proportional. So if wavelength is increasing, so it means frequency is decreasing, right? Or if frequency is increasing, it means wavelength is decreasing. So they are uh, they have an inverse relationship. So here you can see we have different frequency ranges, and they are tagged, right? So here we have long radio waves, right? AM, FM and microwave and infrared radio ultraviolet and this region is important for us because this is the visible region over to the electromagnetic spectrum and here we have x-rays and gamma rays right so here for gamma rays you can see we have a very short wavelength and the frequency is on the high higher side and if we move on here so for long radio waves you can see we have the wavelength on the high side and frequency is on the lower side and this is the visible spectrum right so okay so here we have mentioned wavelength of some of the technologies that are being used for example when we you know, most of the services which, which we talked about voice video data SMS uh, and maybe triple play or high definition TV or maybe uh, video triple play services, they are being offered by using uh, this uh, GSM infrastructure. So the frequency, this is the example because we also have quad band GSM infrastructure. So here if we talk about 900 megahertz, right, then the wavelength is 33 centimeter. For PCS phones, frequency is on the higher side and you can see the wavelength is decreasing uh, for this PCS phones we can see. Then if we talk about Bluetooth, that is uh, another technology, wavelength is again on the higher side as uh, opposed to GSM, 2.4 gigahertz and the wavelength is 12.5 centimeters. So you can see the, uh, you can correlate uh, for example, if I have to mention the wavelength, so you can see 33 17.5 and 12.5 so it's it's decreasing and if we talk about the frequencies right so you can see the frequency uh, started from 900 and 1.8 gigahertz and 2 point so it's it's uh, increasing right and the wavelength is decreasing so here is the electromagnetic spectrum again uh, we can see, right, and we have uh, size of the wavelength, right, and okay. So uh, over here, we have shown different wireless standards, right. So we have Wi-Fi that is uh, a standard uh, for wireless media, and then we have Bluetooth that is another standard, right. So and then we have WiMAX. So those standards, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, they are available almost in every gadget in an nowadays, right? And this WiMAX is uh, used, but uh, it is not very frequent, especially in Pakistan, right? So these are different wireless media standards. So there are different types of electromagnetic carriers when we have to transmit data uh, from one point to another point and remember that we are having wireless communication. So dist distance in this case is very important. So if we have a very small distance between the sender and the receiver, so we can use uh, infrared uh, radiations, right? For example, uh, if we have a remote control and we have a set-top box or maybe a TV or some other uh, satellite receiver, so we can use uh, the infrared radiations. Whenever we have to transmit data at, lo at longer distances, so then in that case we have to use another carrier, right? So that carrier can be a microwave or maybe a radio wave, right? So they, those different carriers, they have different characteristics. So whenever we talk about the, those different carriers, so they actually are lying onto the electromagnetic spectrum. So electromagnetic spectrum, we have mentioned that we have different frequency ranges and we have tagged them uh, accordingly. For example, uh, we have uh, different regions, right, and the different ranges of frequencies over there. So uh, actually, uh, 
the electromagnetic radiations uh, that are part of the electromagnetic spectrum, they uh, are generated or they are uh, the result of electric and magnetic field coupling. So, and uh, we can also have the, uh, have the uh, movement of different type of wave guides, for example, circular, rectangular, uh, when we talk about the electromagnetic radiations or we actually have to use uh, those radiations in order to transmit that data from one point to another point wirelessly, right? Okay. So here uh, we have wireless applications, services, so you can, uh, we can have uh, communication radio, wireless networking, and cellular phones that are being used uh, for uh, different access technologies and then short range communication. This is the infrared based uh, remote control and here we have, uh, you can say, we can use different technologies. Uh, if you talk about the cellular phones, we have GSM, we have LTE, we have uh, 2G and maybe 4G and there are a lot of different technologies in order to have access different services, for example, GPRS for data access, and there's another uh, mechanism, and, the, and another standard edge. So there are a lot of different uh, access technologies, mechanism, uh, and those different access technologies and different uh, mechanisms, they are being used to access different services for wireless. So here we have, because uh, when we talk about the wireless communication, uh, mobility is very, very important. The data rate and the mobility because we can have a fixed wireless infrastructure where all the systems, they are fixed, right? But uh, they're, they are not being connected um, by using wires. They are connected by using some wireless technology, right? So here, although we don't have to lay down the wires, uh, for data transmission and we are using uh, wireless communication in order to uh, communicate data or in order to access services, in order to share services over this network. But when we talk about the mobility, so in that fixed wireless network, mobility is not possible. So we need to support uh, mobility. We need to have mobility, right? So there are a few uh, trade-offs, right? So so here we have mentioned the data rate and you can see the mobility. So at the bottom, at the core, we have the fixed uh, broadband wireless access network and over this fixed broadband wireless access network, we have uh, the other networks, for example, 2G, 3G and then 4G or maybe extended 3G that supports LTE and WiMAX, right? And here we have converged different services over here, mobile wallet, consumer bank, and uh, merchants, right? So we have the internet, right? So most of the time we have to access those different services via internet, right? So this is the co convergence of application and services. So uh, in addition to the advantages of uh, wireless communication, we have uh, disadvantages as well. So let's talk about those different advantages and disadvantages. So first of all, as mentioned, that mobility one of the big advantage. So I can uh, have my cell phone. So if a uh, lot of services are available or I can access a lot of services uh, onto my cell phone, so I can room, room about, so I, I can move from one place to another pl place or maybe from one city to another city or maybe from one country to another country. So whenever we talk about the global communication, so you can uh, think about any service anytime over any infrastructure, over any gadget, over any network, right? So this is the uh, ultimate objective. So mobility is one of the big advantage uh, when we talk about the wireless communication, right? So then network is a solution in areas where cables are impossible to install, right? So we can have uh, hilly areas, right? For, for example, if the distances are so long, 
right? Or maybe we, we don't, uh, we cannot lay down the cable under the oceans or maybe the area is ve ve very hilly or uh, we cannot afford to uh, dig it and to lay down the cables. So this is another advantage that we can, in that case, we can use wireless communication. So we can use satellites, we can use some other ways or means of communication. So this is another advantage. Then easier to maintain. So whenever we talk about the wired communication, so there can be a lot of different blackouts, right, in case of wired communication. So in case of uh, in wireless communication, it's, it's a easier, a bit easier to maintain as opposed to wired communication. Then we have disadvantages uh, as well. So uh, your data is available, right? So and anybody can tap or anybody can jam your uh, services and the cost is on the hard side, right? So of course, uh, in order to lay the infrastructure for wireless communication, we have to uh, pay more, right? So uh, finally, uh, as opposed to wired communication, wireless communication is influenced by physical obstructions, climate conditions. So of course, as we are using free space, so the weather is changing, right? And uh, the climate uh, can uh, have its effect, right? So there can be a lot of interferences, a lot of attenuations, a lot of noise that we have to face and we have to retrieve the data, actual data, uh, from the noisy data that is received on the receiver side. So let's talk about the wireless uh, revolution. So when it started, right, and how it progressed uh, day by day, right? And the cellular is the fastest growing sector of communication nowadays, right? So you can see the uh, exponential growth in cellular communication because we have started in 1982, right? Uh, and now we are uh, in the era where we can say that we are uh, going to offer 5G or maybe 6G services, next generation services. So all started from the generation. So first generation analog 25 to 30 kilohertz FM voice only. So the first generation cellular network can only support voice and the quality was not as good as for the conventional PST and public switch telephone network. And then there came the second generation network and it, the technology being used is narrowband TDM and CDMA, voice and low bit data. So now uh, actually the voice uh, data was supported in first generation and that uh, network was circuit switching based network. And then in the nec next generation, uh, we have improved the voice communication, the quality of the voice communication, but in addition to the improvement of uh, voice communication, the data communication has started. But again, uh, remember that the data rate was on the lower side in the second generation wireless communication. And then we have third generation. So here you can say that uh, now uh, we are actually providing better data rate as opposed to uh, the previous 2G communication and a lot of different services were added, right? So it, the technology behind this third generation communication was wideband TDMA, voice and high bitrate data, portable units. So the mobility was ported, right? So effectively you can say. And then we have, uh, now you can say we are living in the age of 4G and 3G, despite the fact that uh, within Pakistan, uh, most of the carriers, they are still relying on 2.5G, right? Or maybe uh, there are certain services that are being provided on 3G, for example. Uh, the data access by using Evo, right? So you can say that they are actually using uh, the advanced technology. So. Uh, we are actually uh, now in the age of 4G and 5G where the network, the core infrastructure is, will be totally on, uh, the core is totally IP based, right? So it, it means we will 
not be using uh, circuit switching, so all will be packet switching, right? So, and remember that the data rate will be on the higher, higher, higher side. So, theoretically, if we talk about LDE, uh, that is uh, the long-term evolution uh, standard. So, theoretically speaking, it has the capability of supporting 300 MB data rate, right? But uh, if we talk about the practical realization, so practically now you can say that uh, they can achieve 60 to 70 megabit per second data rate, okay? So uh, we are talking about the history. So here comes the patents, right? So that are very important. Uh, because nowadays uh, there are some disputes between different uh, giants of uh, the market. Uh, so let's talk about the radio patents, right? So uh, it was Tesla who filed his basic radio patent in 1897, but that was uh, granted in 1900. So, and the Marconi that is considered uh, as uh, the first who used uh, wireless communication, but uh, Tesla is supposed to file the first patent, and Marconi uses the concept of Tesla, right? In America, uh, he filed his patent in 1900, and it was turned down. So <coughs> then Marconi revised applications over the next three years, and again uh, he got rejections right because of uh, the priority of Tesla and other inventors so here are some of the snapshots of the patents that were filed uh, by Nikola Tesla wireless telegraphy and telephony simply explained okay so here uh, you can say this is the first uh, tower and uh, the uh, height was enormous that is being used in order to have transatlantic wireless communication, right? And it requires enormous power in order to do that. So again, uh, where it started from, right? So it all started from the telegraph. So we call the electric telegraph the most perfect invention of modern times as anything more perfect than this is scarcely conceivable and we really uh, begin to wonder what will be left for the next generation so that was uh, the statement from one of the newspaper right so uh, so let's talk about uh, because the wireless communication actually started his has its roots in telegraphy so let's start what a telegraphy is uh, it's a telegraphy that uses electrical signals Right? So uh, there are two different ways in order to con uh, convey or transmit those electrical signals. Right? So first we can use the fixed lines, communication lines, and then we can, have, uh, we can use uh, radio waves in order to transmit uh, the, those electrical signals. Right? And here we have some of the uh, critics about uh, telecommunications systems because uh, now we are talking about the telegraphy that is actually uh, the reason or the cause of wireless communication. So speed, ability to transmit information in real time, and then electric, electronic transmission, convergence, uh, right, reliability, cost, and security. So these are some of the problems when we talk about the telecommunication system right so and if you talk about the coded transmission right that is also important uh, part of the wireless communication right because we have to encode the data so we have different types of encoding uh, source encoding right because the uh, as uh, we discussed again and again that uh, the ultimate goal is uh, service access so as, as a result, we need to uh, receive data from the transmitter or we need to transmit data, right, to the server, for example. So 
there are different coding levels. So first of all, for example, if I'm going to transmit an image from one point to another point, irrespective of wired or wireless communication. So there are uh, certain uh, <coughs> methods which I have to adopt. For example, I have to use the source encoding, right? Uh, so that uh, the information that is not uh, usable, that is not effective for me, because in an image we have certain uh, information that is not visible for human eye. So why we are we should be carrying that information that is redundant for us with uh, all the time, right? So we have to throw that information uh, out, so that we can have uh, the information that is effective for us, right? So. Uh, we actually use source coding, for example, JPEG uh, compression or JPEG image representation in order to represent that image uh, effectively and efficiently with, with less size, right? So uh, we have to go through certain steps. So let's, uh, we focus on wireless communication. Then we have uh, source coding and then we have channel coding, right? And then after that we have to perform modulation and then we have the antenna and from use by using this antenna we can uh, transmit our signal we can broadcast the mul the communication can be multi point or point to point whatsoever so uh, then on the receiver side again the signals are being received by the antenna and then we will be performing all these steps in the reverse order for example demodulation right and channel decoding right and then source decoding. So this is a very simple example of a communication system. So uh, here we have the origin of the coded transmission, right? So uh, 19, 1793, when the uh, French Revolution occurs, aerial telegraph invented by Claude, right? Extensive network throughput uh, has been achieved. And then in 1840, it was uh, Samuel Morse, right, who actually uses some codes to transmit the data electronically, right? So rapidly spread throughout US, this technology uh, was spread throughout US and Europe. And here come the uh, ITU, International Telegraph Union in 1865 and then uh, there are some military uses of the underlying technology right submarine telegraphy high tech of the late 19th century so here you can see first trans atlantic cable was laid down in 1858 right and uh, it uh, broke after three months and then it was uh, repaired and then uh, London to Bombay in four minutes, 22 seconds. You can see the time because nowadays we have a very limited uh, amount of time. 1901, London to British, British 22 minutes, uh, right? And then 1924, telegraph around the world in 80 seconds. So you can see the year and the improvement we are uh, having with the passage of time, right? So you can see telegraph around the world in 80 seconds. So when we think about radio telegraphy, so as uh, mentioned before that we have two uh, different choices. One, we can use wide media and the other is we can use wireless media that is free space or atmosphere, right? So uh, the actual wireless, uh, the start point of the wireless communication actually is the radio telegraphy right so when we talk about radio telegraphy so we can communicate between uh, moving uh, objects for example ships and other moving vehicles and the messages they are spread into the medium right and uh, when we have to look for its start how it started so first uh, demonstration was performed by Marconi in 1896, right? So his work was actually based on Maxwell and Hertz work, 
right, to send and receive Morse codes, right? So based on long wave, that is uh, greater than one kilometer, spark transmission transmitter technology, right, uh, was used, and it required very large and high power transmission. So as if I go back over here, so you can see the height of the antenna and the power in order to generate those different sparks, right? And that technology was first used by British Army and Navy in one of the wars, right? So here uh, we have more facts and figures uh, regarding wireless communication, 901907. So we have commercial transatlantic wireless services. So we have to build huge ground stations, 13 to 10 meter antennas. So you can imagine the uh, length of the antenna, right? So, and then uh, in World War I, there was rapid development of communication, intelligence, interception, technology, and cryptography because uh, the military, they have their own requirements. So they need encryption so that the enemy, enemy cannot uh, tap their data and uh, understand their data. And in 1920, Marconi discovers short waves that are less than 100 meter, right? Long waves uh, follow contour of the land, right? Very high transmit power, 200 kilowatt. Short waves reflect, reflect and absorb like light. They have uh, properties that are very close to the light and they bounce off ionospheres. Higher frequencies made possible by vacuum tubes and then cheaper, smaller, right? Transmitters were possible, right? So here uh, we have broadband wireless technology because we actually are moving towards the high data rate, right? So by using this broadband wireless technology, higher data rates are achievable, right? And we can transmit uh, graphics, right? So in order to transmit graphics because they are carrying more data, right? So uh, by using broadband, broadband wireless technology, we can use uh, we can transmit uh, graphics, video, and audio, right? And it shared the same advantages of our all wireless services, convenience, and reduced cost, right? Services can be deployed faster than fixed services because we need more time to lay down the cable. So the wireless uh, is, will take less time for infrastructure building. Right, so no cost of cable plant, service is mobile, deployed almost anywhere, right? So here again, the same example, fixed uh, broadband wireless access network, right? So that is the core network and you can launch different services onto this. And there are uh, some limitations and difficulties of wireless technologies as well, right? So it's convenient and uh, this uh, is nowadays you can say, uh, possible that less expensive there are political issues involved and technical dif difficulties right so because uh, you know that when we talk about the wireless communication so we have to uh, use some frequency band so there are different rules and regulations uh, all, all, all over the world at different parts right so uh, for example uh, within Pakistan you, there is an authority right who usually do that Right? So they have their own rules and regulations. And if uh, a carrier who is providing services, he want to launch his services at some other part of the world, right? So there may be some other rules and regulations. So there are some technical as well as political issues uh, involved when talk about the wireless communication. And standardization, that is also one of the key factor that uh, if we talk about the carriers, so one carrier is following one particular standard and another carrier is uh, following another standard. So there are certain issues that are involved uh, when we talk about the standardization. Although we have different uh, standards and those standards has to be followed, but you know that uh, every carrier or every uh, investor or every company, they have their own interest. They have their own business objectives. So as a result, we have a lack of in standardization when we talk about the 
wireless communication and then of course limitations device limitations for example if I talk about a cell phone so, right so there are a lot of different limitations so if I talk about the display so I cannot see uh, the page right so I have to scroll down scroll left right right so although there are a lot of different ga gadgets right and uh, the mobility uh, is is again a question uh, if we talk about those different gadgets right that have a uh, more bigger screen size then power so we have a very limited power uh, we talk about the battery time so it's it's uh, it's not uh, enough right so there are a lot of different d device limitations for example then uh, there can be the processing power nowadays you can say we have quad core processors or uh, but still there are some limitations when we talk about the wireless communication okay <coughs> so here is the comparison right so we have already uh, compared now we will be critically comparing uh, wireless and fixed networks right so higher data loss rate interference so when we talk about the wireless communication so uh, there are uh, conditions climate conditions environmental changes right so other interference due to the buildings maybe due to the um, trees right or maybe uh, due to the temperature right so there are a lot of different losses a lot of different impairments a lot of different attenuations noises so all we have to face when we talk about the wireless network <coughs> limited availability of useful spectrum right so spectrum is already uh, full right so uh, it's it's a very limited resource moreover this resource has not been used effectively and efficiently in most uh, countries most of the countries in most of the underdeveloping countries right so this is another limitation that the availability of the spectrum frequencies have to be coordinated useful frequencies are almost almost uh, occupied low transmission rates high delays high jitter right so this is another problem that we have to face jitter we have to face delays when we talk about device communication so we can understand uh, the communication but uh, in other communications we cannot afford delay and jitter and then when we talk about the uh, GSM infrastructure cellular communication so there is a uh, delay uh, due to setup time okay security that is another issue right and uh, um, the data, data tapping eavesdroppers right so there are a lot of different issues okay so here we have uh, shown the trend shifting trend right so here we have a uh, single hop network and this is the core wide network right uh, wireless network and here are the people or the, the devices that can access this network right so it's a single hop network and here we have the multi hop network right so you can see we can uh, have ad hoc network <coughs> over here so again uh, we have another uh, example of wireless infrastructure so impressive wireless infrastructure so you can see we have started from a single room then uh, this is uh, a pico cell right in the building you can build a pico cell and then if we uh, increase the area right micro cell urban and then micro macro cell suburban and then we have the global right so you can we can we are using satellite technology over here for this macro cell yet you can say that this is uh, maybe a bts or maybe some other device right so uh, you can see the improvisation of this uh, wireless communication so here uh, wireless network overlay right so you can see we have in building right so campus metropolitan and this is the regional and this is the wide area overlay network over here and here we have shown the his history uh, GSM base station in Europe so Nokia was the first who uh, actually launched their uh, first GSM infrastructure and here is the base station right over there 
So here are some of the challenges, uh, design challenges. Still we have a lot of different challenges uh, right? and a lot of challenges uh, that you can say we have already accommodated. So hardware design, precise components, small, lightweight, low power, and they should be cheap and uh, high frequency operations, system design, then information because uh, of course we need to represent data, right? and then we need to transform the data so that we can launch it uh, into the atmosphere or free space for transmission. So high data rates and robust to noise, uh, right? And then there should be support for many users. Then we talk about the net network design, connectivity and high speed. Of course, these are the uh, key objectives that we want uh, connectivity any interface, uh, any place, anywhere, right, over any part of the world. So connectivity and high speed. We want uh, high speed data rates. And there are energy issues, uh, challenges, and delays constraints. So these are the challenges. We have a lot of different areas that can be addressed, right, if we have uh, wireless communication right so after a uh, brief discussion about the wireless communication that what is a wireless communication then uh, talking about the electromagnetic spectrum and uh, after that we have uh, discussed different infrastructures right and we talk about a bit about history so let's uh, talk uh, what book we are going to follow and what are the course contents which we have to go through right during our 32 lectures because we will be having 32 lectures during this course so this is the textbook which I will be following wireless communication and networks it is written by William Stalling and we will be using its second edition so these are the topics which we will be going through one by one right during uh, our course right or during our lectures first of all we will be talking about transmission fundamentals because when we talk about the uh, communication transmission or wireless communication wireless transmission so we need to know certain concepts right then they, those concepts they are very important because they will uh, be keep uh, repeating right during this course so first of all uh, signals for conveying information so uh, we need to represent data so in order to represent that data we are going to certain signals right so relationship between data rate and bandwidth so whenever we have analog and digital data transmission so we have a lot of choices analog and digital data right analog and digital signals so for example the data is uh, analog and we want to use analog signaling right and if the data is analog and we want to use the uh, analog signaling or maybe digital signaling and if we have digital data right and we want to use analog signaling or digital signaling as well then channel capacity that is also again a very important concept uh, when we talk about the communication especially the wireless communication and we will be following Nyquist criteria and Shannon uh, formula that is uh, considered the father of communication so there is a limit uh, that is imposed by Shannon capacity formula then we will be talking about the media because media is very important uh, we have different types of media guided and unguided and uh, we will be classifying those different media on on the basis of different characteristics they are providing right so transmission media characteristics and design specifications right guided unguided media and what are the wireless transmission frequencies antennas and wireless propagation and then uh, focusing on wireless communication so we will be talking about wireless transmission examples uh, as we have different choices terrestrial microwave satellite microwave broadcast radio infrared right and my uh, wireless transmission system comparison wireless propagation modes so we can have different wireless propagation modes and there are different multiplexing techniques in order to 
achieve a high data rate between the core networks, right? So TDM, FDM, WDM, and then communication network. So there are different uh, technologies that are being used, and they are still there. Uh, circuit switching, uh, actually, that is the core uh, communication technology for conventional PSTN network. And then packet switching, that is the core uh, communication technology that is uh, being used for the internet, over the internet, you can say, frame relay and ATM. And then protocol, because uh, uh, the, as uh, discussed, that uh, irrespective of wireless or wired communication, our uh, goal is, our objective is the data transmission from one point to another point uh, without errors or with uh, less errors, right? If there are errors, so our system should have the capability to uh, extract the data, right, or to retrieve the data from the noisy information which we have received. So the ultimate goal is the data transmission from one point to another point. So uh, this uh, transmission right, is a complex task, and we have to divide this complex task into subtasks. And those different subtasks are being allocated at different uh, levels. So uh, those different levels, they are performing different subtasks. And we have to follow certain rules in order to perform those subtasks because the problem is that the sender and the receiver should be knowing that what's what's going on, how the sender will be sending the data, and the receiver will be receiving the data, right? And what are their capabilities, right? And in case of errors, how they will be going to handle the situation, right? Either it will be retransmitted or the receiver have the capability to retrieve the data, right? So. Uh, and then uh, what's uh, the upper limit, right? So how many packets, if we are talking about the packet transmission or packet-based networking, so how many packets are being uh, sent uh, simultaneously, right? And how the jitter will be accommodated, how the delay will be accommodated, right? So uh, because maybe uh, the system has to define some buffer in order to. So this should be known at the, uh, or there should be a dialogue between the sender and receiver when we talk about all those different subtasks, right? So it means uh, we have to follow certain rules and regulations, or we have to perform those subtasks under some rules, under some conditions, under some regulations. So in order to do that, we have to define a protocol, right? So protocol is actually going to define those different rules on different layers where the subtask has to be performed, right? So we have different layers, uh, and every layer has its own functionality. And as uh, mentioned, the task has to be performed by using certain rules and regulations, by certain following certain standards, so there should be protocols uh, at different layers. For example, we can talk about TCP IP protocol suit. That is a bunch of protocol, right? So first of all, why we need protocol and why we are following layered approach. And then the key features of a particular protocol, for example, uh, TCP IP stack. Then we have different protocols at different layers. For example, TCP, right? UDP, IP. So uh, every protocol has its own feature, so we'll be talking about the key features. Those are being represented by different protocols. Then uh, architecture and the addressing, that is also very, very important when we talk about wide communication or wireless communication. The addressing is very, very important, right? And we will be comparing TCP IP and OZ stack. And finally, the general networking te terminology will be explored under the title protocol and the TCP IP protocol. Then wireless communication technology, right? So uh, we will be talking about the uh, technologies that are available, right? Uh, and we have, uh, we will be discussing the enhancements that are being made regarding the data rate, 
regarding the error detection, error correction when we talk about the wireless communication technologies and what are the advantages, right? And what we have to pay if uh, I have one techno I'm using one technology and I'm able, able to achieve more data rate, so what I have to pay, right? So this is very important. Coding of analog and digital data for wireless transmission and then antenna. When we talk about the transmission, right? So this is the last entity that the system uh, contain. When we talk about the reception, this is the first entity when the system have. Uh, we can have uh, an antenna that is acting as a transmitter and receiving antenna. And then the propagation, because the <coughs> propagation is associated with antenna, because the antenna has to transmit or radiate energy into the atmosphere. And when we talk about the reception, so it will be absorbing energy from the atmosphere and will be converting that energy into the uh, data, right? So principles of radio and microwave antenna performance, what are the factor, antenna size, and then we will talking about uh, fading and so on. So here we have uh, different detailed uh, discussion about antenna and propagation because uh, we have to transmit electromagnetic energy into the free space and then uh, we have to receive energy uh, from sp free space, right? So this uh, electromagnetic radiation is a result of electric and magnetic field coupling. So electromagnetic radiations and there are certain concepts that are important. Uh, if you can see wavelength period and relationship and then the phase lag, phase lead, and why we need antennas and uh, there are different uh, parameters that are related to the antenna. So why uh, we are using, uh, what are the advantages of using separate transmission and receiving an antenna? Because no, now we have technologies where we have single antenna and it's acting as a transmitter and receiver at the same time, right? And the characteristics, polarization, wavelength, antenna gain and antenna length. And then signal encoding uh, techniques. That is very, very important when we talk about the wireless communication. Analog and digital data. This is the data representation and analog and digital signals, right? This is the signaling that can be used. Coding, we have different encoding schemes. Uh, NRZ, multi-level binary, biphase, right? Then we have uh, analog. If in, This is the encoding scheme. These are the encoding schemes when we have digital data and we are using digital signals, right? And then if we have analog data and we are going to use digital signals, then we can have PCM, pulse code modulation, and delta modulation. Then if we have digital data and we are going to use analog signal, right? So here we have uh, some choices. ASK, FSK, frequency shift keying, amplitude shift keying, and binary uh, frequency shift keying and PSK phase shift keying. And we have analog data and we are going to use analog signals. So amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and phase mod modulation. So uh, here uh, is the spec spectrum. That is again an important uh, subject because uh, the problem with the wireless communication that uh, there are a lot of different chances for jamming. There are different choices uh, for the eavesdropper to tap the data. So we can use different technologies, different uh, techniques that we can secure that data from the tapper, from the eavesdropper. So SPET spectrum is actually the technique that is uh, used firstly for military applications, then after that it is used for commercial applications. So we have different sped spectrum techniques and uh, those are frequency hopping and direct sequence sped spectrum, frequency hopping sped spectrum and direct sequence sped spectrum. Then we have a multiplexing technique that is being used uh, when we talk about sped spectrum, code division multiple access, right? and uh, Whenever we have to transmit data, so because the noise is omnipresent, noise is present uh, all around, so we cannot escape noise. So the bits and bytes can be noisy. So if we have sent one, so on the receiver side we can receive a zero, or we have sent a zero, we can receive a one on the receiver side. So how to uh, first detect error, 
and then after its detection it should be corrected right so there are some uh, schemes that have the capability to detect error and then uh, to correct error right so for example when we talk about different uh, uh, the simplest uh, scheme that is the parity checking so uh, what we normally do we assign a parity bit right uh, alongside the data so for example we have eight bits of data we assign one bit of parity and that parity bit is used at the receiver side to detect whether there are some errors or not but there are some limitations of course every algorithm has its own limitations uh, pros and cons so if single bit error can be detected in the simple uh, parity bit uh, error detection methodology but if there are errors in two bits so that cannot be detected by this parity so there should be some error detection and error control methodologies and mechanisms when we talk about the wireless communication right so we will be talking about uh, coding and error control for forward error correction right so some as mentioned some algorithms they can have the ability to detect error and then correct error so uh, there are algorithms that can only detect error then we can use some other algorithms in order to detect those errors and then we're talking about automatic repeat request ARQ technique right and then satellite communication that's again an important topic so uh, geostationary satellite then LEOs right low earth orbiting satellite and then MEOs medium earth orbiting satellites right and capacity allocation so how we can enhance the cap uh, capacity when we talk about the satellite communication there are different techniques which we can use cellular wireless network that is again a uh, uh, key concept so what we have uh, we will uh, after grabbing a lot of different ideas techniques about transmission about media about uh, coding and coding modulation demodulation so here we will try to apply them right so we will be talking about cellular wireless communication and uh, we will start from first generation cellular wireless network then uh, talk about second generation because there are uh, enhancements right um, that are being made day by day so nowadays we are living in 4G or you can also say 5G right so different cellular wireless networks and the generations right and then we will be talking about the GSM focusing because nowadays most of the services uh, are being offered by using GSM infrastructure right so voice video they are uh, video uh, triple play quadruple they are actually uh, offering those services to the end users by using this in GSM infrastructure global system for mild communication so we'll be talking about digital transmission ISDN right so roaming so this is again a big plus and the technology that are being used under the umbrella of GSM right and then of course as we will be using or we will be talking about uh, some simulation tool that is important when we talk about the uh, networking data communication wireless communication right so we cannot do that uh, for the evaluation for the uh, design analysis that we first build the network then we uh, send the traffic and then we capture the data and after capturing the data we will be analyzing so this is uh, not possible because for example I have a, a start topology and I have uh, connected all the devices and nodes that are required within an infrastructure so now I want to test my uh, environment infrastructure by changing the topology I want uh, another topology that is mesh topology right or maybe a bus topology so this is not possible physically uh, that you are all the time changing uh, physically or connecting physically the devices the nodes and the media so this is not possible all the time so in order to accommodate uh, or analyze the design to evaluate uh, the uh, data rate 
to evaluate uh, certain metrics, certain parameters that includes their jitter packet loss or maybe data, data rate. So what we can do, we can have a simulation tool right, that uh, we are able to, that will provide us the facility to design a network, design a topology, assign uh, certain uh, characteristics, right? For example, when we have to connect two nodes, so I can declare that those two nodes, they are being connected by a link that is providing, uh, for example, 10 megabit per second bandwidth. And this is the delay that is offered by this link, right? And this is the uh, packet loss, right? That is, uh, uh, we are going to have and we'll be transmitting data. So in that way, I can design a network, I can uh, generate synthetic traffic, I can launch the traffic on my design, and then I can capture the data. So I can uh, evaluate, analyze the captured data by plotting it or by maybe uh, applying some tools onto the data, and then I can evaluate the data. So this is uh, all about simulation tools. So we'll be using or talking network simulator tool that is uh, event-based discrete simulating tool, right? So it work at the packet level. So there are different models or uh, different features we can have uh, or protocols it support, right? TCP, UDP, FTP, right? And uh, we can simulate wired as well as wireless network, right? We can use it on Windows, Unix, or maybe Mac OS X, right? So we will be using the simulation tool, right? And finally, we'll be talking about software-defined radios. So uh, over here, again, we will be using most of the concepts which we have learned during this course, right? So uh, actually, when we talk about the wireless communication, so there are a lot of different devices, a lot of different concepts that are being involved, right? So as mentioned, uh, we have uh, different encoders, filters, modulators, right? So they all, most of the time, they are hardware-based. They are rigid. So what we want, that we want to introduce flexibility. So if I have a communication system and I want to change the modulation scheme. So if I, I have a rigid mod, uh, communication system, right? Uh, so uh, by having this rigid communication system, I cannot change the modulation scheme. Or maybe uh, I, I want to do, uh, to accommodate some other changes, right? So I want to uh, raise the power, transmission power, right? So. Uh, this is not possible when we have a rigid radio, rigid communication system, right? So this is only possible if I have uh, all those uh, functions that include filters, modulators, and um, uh, maybe uh, encoders, decoders, right? So they are software-based, right? So they are encoded by, encoded by using software. So we will be talking about how we can uh, do that. So our objective, when we talk about the software-defined radio, our objective is we want to move as close as possible near to the antenna that is transmitting energy into the atmosphere. If we are talking about the transmitter and receiving energy from the free space when talk, talking about the receiver. So we want to move as close as possible near to the antenna. But in order to do that, we have to encode all those different functions, for example, demodulation, modulation, then encoding, decoding, filtering, and other DSP-based uh, concepts by using soft, uh, software. So they should be coded into a general purpose computer. And now you have the flexibility to adapt accordingly. So you can change the modulation schemes. You can change the encoding schemes. You can change the power. You can change the other parameters accordingly, right? So we'll be talking about the software-defined radios. That is very, very important uh, during this uh, advanced uh, communication era. OK, uh, that's all for today's lecture. And we will continue our lectures uh, during this course. And we will be having a good time during the course, I suppose. 
and that's all from my side. Meri taraf se Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum.